first of all, folks, we're talking about the Public People's Trust 1776.org if you want to get on the internet and learn more about this trust. We are now under a new trust. Um, the group that has developed this and brought it to the world is uh, a small group of people that hopefully we can have join us, but... Um, but they have perfected a superior trust to the Vatican's and Rome's trusts and papal bulls, etc. Uh, we have a perfected superior trust. So we're going to be talking about that and we're going to be talking about how we can uh, take advantage of that, of course, and everything else. So, um, Chris, would you like to kick off or do we have Lisa with the history? Well, um, if Lisa wants to speak for a minute just about the sequence of events since the 25th of December um, and what she knows of the history because she's had a little bit of direct contact with one of the trustees and uh, has probably got a, a clearer picture than you know most people would have. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. For okay. What, if for what we've got, yes. Well, we, I I guess mean, we all know this went public on the, on the 25th of December and it took probably a week, I think, for word to really get around amongst the alternative media crowd um, and for people to get our heads around what had taken place. And this has been a process that Heather, one of the trustees, has been going through for the last, say, three to four years and used the process of foreclosure used her own house, in fact, as the guinea pig for this, and used the process of foreclosure to take it, take this case up through the system. Not too dissimilar to what James McBride did using foreclosures, but they ended up in different places and using different processes. And where Heather ended up was with the UCC. Now, the situation that we seem to find ourselves in at the moment with these filings with the UCC is that they, as at today, they stand unrebutted. Now, most people who have done any kind of study with, uh, with straw man and law and trust law and, and commercial law know that any claim that stands unrebutted becomes law, which is how these trusts started in the first place. And... In order to now rebut them, what, from what we can make out, they have to do one of two things. They either have to invalidate the UCC, and by doing so, they actually invalidate themselves along with it, or they have to rebut these documents, which they can't, simply because the, over, the, the overwhelming evidence is there. Um, so they're, they're caught in a catch-22 at the moment, the powers that were. Alrighty. Um, so let's, let's do a bit of history then, um, Chris, if you can help us through that, and how um, uh, I have heard a bit of Heather, Heather Tucci speaking and how they, um, you know, uh, went into court and tested out how the magistrates and judges are working in cahoots with the bankers. So they discovered all that, and, and of course Heather is a law was a lawyer, and so good background in law. But um, I did learn how she went into court many, many times just testing things to see if this would work and that would work and eventually they exposed and revealed and understood how the whole system works and then they set about a plan to um, uh, perfect a superior claim uh, against it. So if you can do that, Chris, that'll be great. Okay, well, you just about... Stated pretty much what I know too, Santos. Because the <laughs> the only the only we we really need to um, to understand that there will be a time when when uh, you know assuming all goes well, which we absolutely hope it does, that the trustees come forward and tell their own story in their own words in great detail. And the the information we've got at the moment from Heather from that interview and a little bit of stuff um, you know directly from Heather. Uh, is that the, the three trustees have been involved in UCC law for a long time 
and had a great understanding of it and also a really deep understanding of how the the powers that were were actually using UCC to control the whole financial system at a very high level including we think keeping we've we did a brief a little bit of cursory research on universities in this country and finding it difficult to find any references to teaching UCC in the curricula that we looked at and we didn't look at all of them we didn't find it anywhere so we're kind of concluding they've kept UCC law inside the corporations and only teach it to people who actually have to use it in real life so the the only other people around the place who have experienced UCC law to any great depth are people like Heather and, and there will be people like Winston Trout and all the other uh, guys who've been doing sovereignty and straw man type work for many years because ultimately all they all end up arriving at the door of UCC and starting to try and use it not with a great deal of success from what we've gathered and one of the reasons for that is that I, I don't think they unless you're an operative in a corporate in UCC I don't think you get to know much about it unless you find out the hard way and for some people that's been quite hard but the trustees sound like they were on the inside they were doing corporate work in UCC and built up a, built up enough experience and at the same time got a grip on how the uh, powers that be were actually operating behind the scenes with UCC law and decided to it they what they appear to have done to us is set a massive trap which the um, uh, the powers that were seem to have walked straight into and uh, you know based on incidents you know uh, information that's come up over the last week um, we suspect the trap is about to completely close and one of the things you need to understand about the UCC filings is that there's a sequence of events to it the first thing to say about their website is that the, their website is not actually for public consumption it was never really intended to explain to the people what the trustees have done how they've done it in any great detail it's actually the trustees publicly noticing the system as to the, as to the fact the filings have actually been completed up to a certain stage and that's a requirement of the processes they were carrying out they had to actually complete the public noticing and what they did was simply tell us that um, that the uh, um, where the site was and there was stuff on it and that's what happened on December 25th our attention was drawn to this site where they've been building up these filings to examine the filings is a hard read there's absolutely no doubt about that they're all they're all written in complex language it's a mixture of legalese and English and it takes some time to get the hang of actually you know where to find the good bits in the documents because there's a lot of repetitious stuff a lot of cross references to other documents it's all pretty heavy going but if you can get your head around some of it then you can start to see what it is they've actually done and it's it's relying completely on a, the standard kind of administrative process that many people who have been involved in dealing with with corporations because all the government's corporations um, is in fact to make a claim against them and ask them to rebut the claim within a certain period of time or they'll default and then after the first period of time has elapsed you you actually notice them that they're in fault and remind them that they've been asked to rebut this claim and if they in after the second time period they don't rebut you actually put them into default that's the very basic administrative process and the UCC is a version of that and I think the timings a bit different and certainly the terminology is different but it's the same process and once they're in default in the case of uh, a, a normal situation just you know you and a corporation you could go to a court with the documentation and ask for a summary judgment in the case of UCC it appears that it actually stands in law at that point until uh, and there, there's probably a process where you could attack it after the final default if you were the defaulter but it's, we're not clear on how that's done but what is clear is that the trustees set up a sequence of situations where the uh, powers that were were in a position where they would default if they didn't rebut and they didn't so can, as far as we can tell can I, the document stands in law Do you jump in Bob um, one one important thing for people to understand and to realize when you're talking about the uniform commercial code the Uniform Commercial Code is the Bible when it comes to commerce. And one of the things in, in this whole history, one of the things that Heather uh, was working on, she was actually investigating um, certain papers, documents, and uh, um, 
um, claims that were made for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And when she started to see a lot of the, the, the fraud that was going on, and understand everything, everything in our world, in our system as we know it, <coughs> is commerce. <coughs> the government is all based on commerce. The court system is all based on commerce. The judge sits on a bench. When you look that legal term up in, the, uh, in your, in your uh, Black's Law Dictionary, you'll find that bench actually means bank. They are administrating commerce. And so all the laws of the land eventually comes back down to the Uniform Commercial Code, the law of commerce. The world has become a market. And this is, this is one of the things that you must understand when you're talking about the principles of law in our, in our, in our current system. It's all based on commerce. So anything that is entered into the Uniform Commercial Code, I mean, and this is, you're talking about a, a mountain, it's probably a library unto itself. Just that if you were to print the code out, you probably would fill a whole bookshelf. I mean, you're talking about a mountain of statutes and codes that is very, very explicit and, and extremely precise in dictating how trade and commerce should be interacted internationally. So by filing these documents under the UCC code, and this is what they use as the basis for everything that they do. When they foreclose on your home, if they foreclose or they take your car or anything like that, they're using that same UCC process. So to, to, to a lot of people will say, oh, well, I've never heard of UCC and these filings don't mean anything. To invalidate the UCC filings would invalidate the entire system. It would invalidate all foreclosures. It would invalidate everything that the IRS does. It would invalidate tax collection. It would invalidate all of that because they're all governed by these laws. So they, they picked a forum with which to operate in that everyone around the planet recognizes. And this is, a, this is something that is a public registry so that once it, once it becomes part of the public record, and if you know anything about law, when a claim is made and becomes part of the public record, when it is unrebutted, it becomes fact. It becomes true. And these claims are extremely explicit in what they're stating, you know, that they are running private money systems, they are operating a slavery system, you know, using debt um, and controlling the masses through commerce. And these claims that they're made are very distinct, and they can't really be rebutted. And another very interesting thing about these documents, why they're so, what I would say, bulletproof, is because they take the tact of making the claim that the original trust, and we're talking about trust law, whenever you're dealing with the transfer of any kind of property, you're talking about trust law and contract law. The original trust was between the creator and the beings on earth. The creator is the one who grants everything. And these are the these documents literally tie us back to that original trust. The earth was given to man to dominate, to take care of, to be custodians thereof. And every human being, therefore, as a living, breathing man, woman, and I'm including both, you are an, an inheritor of that trust. You are a beneficiary of that trust. Everyone gets a portion of that trust. And no claim, no one can stand between you, yourself, and your creator. There's no other authority. So we're taking, we're, 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 we're asking them, do you have a claim higher than the creator's? Who can? And thus, it becomes unrebuttable. Now, 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 does this go back, Bob, to um, the papal bull unum sanctum by 
Boniface the Eighth. This 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 goes all the way back to you're talking about all the way before that. No 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 uh, yeah I know but but see but see UCC and the Vatican and Rome and the whole system is actually you know they're operating yes. under under a, a papal bull of course that's the, that's the maximum Roman? authority they've got right. You're talking well, about. Well, as you said in the beginning, it's it's superior to that trust. It's superior that's to that right. claim. That's right. Right. That's right. That, that was the that's original true. claim. The the Roman canon law and the papal bull, they made the original claim that they had they had gained the world through conquest. And so, they had. Yeah. And, and it they stood did. unrebutted. Yeah, exactly. So no one has perfected a superior claim since 1302, really. I mean, we know that they've had the game, you know, since Nero's time and, and the Julian dynasty. And even before that, you know, you can go back, and I've addressed all that. But but the bulls are the ones that really... Because that was the first expressed trust in history, 1302, according to, you know, my research. So what what do you know, Bob? Well, uh, I mean, is that right? In, in legal terms, yes, that was yeah. the primary claim, and everything you know, like they say, all all roads led to Rome. Well, that's still true today. By and large, the Vatican is the largest holder of wealth in human history. So, yeah, all all roads lead to Rome, but what they've done, what Heather is talking about, by going back to prime. She's going all the way back to the dawn of creation. Of course. Cool. There's essentially been a reset. We've re the system's been reset to prior to any of that. Indeed. Uh, one, of the, one of the places we can start at, just to um, sort of try and get into people's minds what the process that took place, it, it actually began... I, I missed a bit of the conversations because I had to do something, but I'm hoping I'm not repeating anything anyone said. The process began uh, really, they, there were some initial filings, but ultimately the thing that really kicked it off was the trustees resumed and reactivated the original public trust created by the original Constitution of the United States and then abandoned. And they rebonded themselves, or they bonded themselves to the trust, but they bonded the trust to the Creator. And the result is that the, the only players in this game, in this, in this trilogy of this trust, are the creator and the trustees and us as the beneficiaries. There's no, nothing else in play here. There is just that, tril that, that trinity, if you like. Uh, would that be an accurate statement, Bob? Perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. so... And this the, is, when, when, when you hear, if you're going through the documents and she talks about everything has to go back to prime, this is what she means. It's got to go back to the original trust that the Creator made with man. Indeed. Now, the, the thing about that is, is that's never occurred before on this planet in terms of an organized government. The trusts that the, the Catholic Church... Uh, created, and I, I, I haven't. I saw some details on the trusts originally, but I don't think they were structured the same way. Do you, have you uh, researched the um, the actual structure structure that the Catholic Church trusts created? These Sesti KV trusts, Bob. Yeah, the Sesti KV trusts were. I mean, and you're talking about again Babylonian slave system. It, it is a if you if you study slave systems, this is probably the worst form of slave system ever devised. Because what it what it literally does is people unwillingly consent to their own enslavement. And when they do that, you know, when they they basically your your sweat, your love, your blood, your labor, anything that you may produce in life has been monetized. You, the living, breathing person, you have a monetary value according to them. And that monetization is, is set up in, in, in uh, certificates and trusts that are held, you know, unknowingly, to, un unknowingly by you, and you consent to it. 
And in this whole slavery game, there's only one winner. There's, it's rigged that it, only the bank can win. The, the house always wins. Yep. Now, just to resume, to resume sort of the sequential nature of our, our explanation, I, and I sort of apologize in advance for the complexity of this and the length of time it takes to explain, but we really need to make this clear to everybody exactly what we think has been done. Uh, and um, once the trustees had had resumed the trust and expressed themselves as trustees, and, and if you if you um, are logged onto the website, read the, one of the trustees' bonds. They're all the same. Just just read one of them, and there's some brilliant stipulations for the commitment that these people make. And one of the aspects of the the whole people's trust is the the complete personal responsibility that everybody takes as part of in, in their role as the trust whether you're a beneficiary whether you're a trustee you're actually on your own recognizance you're completely responsible for yourself and you're completely responsible for ensuring the free will of others in that process and again this is something that that no government structure that I've ever seen or heard or read about is like it's all of the other government structures and this is directly what Bob's referring to are slave structures where there is a chain of authority that comes from the top and essentially you have to follow their rules. None of that here. We're actually on our own recognizance as beings and and one of the things you'll see mentioned in the documents is, is universal law as well as UCC law and common law, which are the three elements of law they've introduced into the entity they've entity they've created in the form of the the, the trust itself and the entities that can be used by the, by the beneficiaries to assist them in having a community run, which is called CVAC, which we'll have to touch on later. Um, personal responsibility flows all the way through it, and the basis of that is from universal law, that we have free right of will, to, do, to carry out any act we want to carry out, provided it doesn't impinge on the free will of any other being. Now, when you think about that, that covers the Ten, ten Commandments on steroids. That's what it's all about. That is the, the universal law, and the trust begins and ends in that concept, that no being is actually able to infringe on the free will rights of another being. And the other main concept involved in setting up of the trust is that Every state of being on the planet, and that's the way they refer to humans as a state of being, every state of being on the planet has equity. We are all equal in the, in the eyes of the trust. We all have equal access to the assets of the planet, which they've stipulated as all the gold and silver, and we have right of access to the assistance mechanisms that, that ultimately would get set up by this uh, this trust when it's full when the whole process is fully enacted and you could call those when have you ever heard of sorry when have you ever yeah. heard of a government referred to as an assistance mechanism yeah well yeah. you haven't because it's not i don't even want to use the word government because one of the definitions i've seen of government is is you know mind control govern meant meant mental govern control um you know there are others that argue it means different things but you know, mind control is a good way of, of actually putting it because they trick us into believing that they're in charge. When you look at, the, look at governments, really, the people should be in charge of them at all times because they're our public servants. But that's not the way governments have been practiced so far under the Babylonian system. Now, we, know, we, we know all about that because we've lived it our entire lives. This is a completely different way of operating and a completely different way of thinking. And this is the thing that struck us first when, you know, in that first week after these were filed, was just sort of looking at the way the trust was structured on this basis and the way the CVAC entities actually work going, well, this is pretty much a wish list of, of what... If we could flick a switch and turn off all the crap and go to another system, you know, this, this ticks virtually all the boxes and boxes we haven't even thought of. And it's all... It's all this, this information is all in the documents, but as we you know, all know there, it's, uh, it takes a bit of work to actually find the information. So uh, one, one of the things I'd like to touch on now is what, what, this, what this series of filings isn't. And this is, this is something that, that um, Lisa and Bob and myself have discussed at length. You know, we, we sort of got a picture of what the trust is. 
And we also discuss what it isn't. Okay, well, is it a scam? Well, have a look at the huge amount of work in these filings. Why would you bother? Is it a scam because they're making money? Well, no one's asked for any money at this stage. And someone at some point somewhere on the internet, and I'm not sure where it came from, claimed it was a scam because you had to pay $15 to get verified versions of the documents from um, some service in some state in the United States, uh, which turns out to be a standard commercial service if you want a copy of any UCC document, so no scam there, folks. Uh, there's been no, no legal opinion offered from any quarter on any aspect of this apart from Judge Dale, who contributed anonymously to our knowledge by earlier in the year uh, putting out a long discourse on all of the shenanigans in the in the legal legal fraternity that he was aware of, which was extremely interesting and revealing, he actually did have a look at these documents and felt they were what they appeared to be. Uh, so we're not seeing any signs of it as being uh, a commercial scam. Is it a distraction? Well, it's certainly distracting us, but there's no fear attached to this. Okay, there is only positivity attached to this. There's hope attached to this. Uh, false hope? We don't think so. That's not what we're thinking at the moment. The game is still in play and, and the trust has yet to be physically manifested publicly but you know we feel it's still moving in that direction and uh, so we can't see any reason not to speak to it as if it's real because the stuff in here, once you get your head around it, is just uh, 20 years ahead of where I thought we would be because I thought we were in for a long, long battle against the powers that were to try and get them out of the system. And what it effectively does, and, and I'll, I'll kick it back to Bob and Lisa to talk to what the trust is and if they want to, because what it effectively does is give us something that, that um, at this stage we could have only dreamed of. So, Bob and Lisa, do you want to speak to what the trust isn't and why you think it, it, it actually is what it appears to be? Well, what I, what I appear, what I think that the, the trust isn't, it's not a, it's not a new. A lot of people have this whole fear. Oh well, it's the, it's the new world order, and it's just in a different form. Absolutely not. What it's literally done is it's removed all mechanisms of control, and placed that responsibility back into the hands of the people. So no one could, I mean, unless you create a new world order, um, you know, or we the people create a new world order, it, it, it's not that. It is not a new system, of, it's not a new hierarchical system of governance. It is a more of a system of uh, guardianship, I would say. Um, the structures that they have put in place basically have the role of guardianship to make sure that everything remains transparent and that nothing is used that is not for the benefit of the people. Anything that goes against the benefit of the people is strictly forbidden. So you're, you're, you're talking about a, a, a new, a completely new paradigm. You're talking about a completely new way of Looking at ourselves, number one, that we are divine beings, and looking at the way that we govern ourselves and the way that we take responsibility for our choices. And it's all about the ability to make those choices freely. And when you read these documents, basically anything that hinders your free will to make your choices in life have been removed. Anything that has stood in the place between you and your creator has been completely removed, foreclosed, terminated, caused to exist, ceased. This is uh, the first time in human history where we actually have documents that not only validate you know, our basic un unalienable rights, but codifies it in such a way that it cannot ever be taken away without your consent. So, so Bob, um, to, to feel the benefits of this trust, because people would love to feel... I mean, imagine 
some of the listeners would be, you know, in situations in courts, fighting for this, fighting for that, probably mortgage, uh, um, and they'd love to feel the effects of this. Um, to, in order for the world to benefit sooner rather than later, um, what would be the best way? What would be the best way to do that? Obviously, get the word around, right, that we're under this new trust. So, what, any suggestions there? Well, disclosure is extremely important because people need to know that this has been done for them. You know, uh, we, we, talked about, we talked about this a little bit earlier privately. You know, when the Berlin Wall came down or, or when the order for the Berlin Wall to, to come down was first, was first given, people didn't automatically just start crossing over there was still a lot of trepidation. There was still a lot of fear. And it wasn't until this, this young man, about 21 years old, jumped up on top of the wall, and everybody was like, oh, what are you doing? You know? And he's looking around, and the police are also looking around, what, what do we do? You know? And they weren't getting any orders from their superiors, and nothing was being done, so he jumped over to the other side. And when nothing, when the others saw oh, he made it over and not, he was not harmed, then everybody started to crawl up on this wall, and within five, ten minutes, they were literally tearing it down with their hands, literally, de you know, tearing the wall down. And this is, I think, where we're, we're, we're entering into. This has been done for you. Now, the announcement has been made. Look, this is what we have discovered. The fraud is real. It has been documented it has been codified. These, these uh, powers that were are by their own consent and by not rebutting the claim, you know, they are admitting to it. And you need to, you need to think about this. These are, a lot of these people are named by name. You know, you're talking about government leaders and officials, owners of the Bank of International Settlements, um, the United States government and all the various different forms of state governments around the world have been accused of running slavery systems, accused of treason, and, and, not, and I'm just talking about, I'm talking high treason, which is punishable by death in most countries, okay? And these claims were made publicly. Now, if someone accused you publicly of murder, treason, and running slavery systems, it, it would behoove you to rebut those claims rather than to allow them into the public record. I mean, can you imagine, you know, Santo, someone accusing you of doing these things and you have nothing to say about it? And this is exactly, exactly what has happened. They have nothing to say about it. Yeah, I, I, actually, what I'll, I'll just take up the story for a sec, Bob, because what you're saying is absolutely spot on, that, that, that they had to rebut and they didn't. What I'd like to do is just quickly finish the sequence of events just so people can understand what happened after the trustees took up the trust and, and joined us all to it. They created a, an entity, a legal entity they called the debtor, and they rolled into this entity the entire system, all the bankers, all the corporations, all the government corporations, the whole lot. And, that, and that, at that point, they, they put a document out called... Um, and that you'll find this in the orders menu in the orders menu on the site order of finding an action where they actually define this debtor and specify that this this debtor has been cre uh, committing deceptive acts and practices for a very long time and in fact and in fact ultimately they end up as bob said accusing them of treason and the sequence was was set from that point onwards. Once the accusation was made, there was really a requirement to rebut, which they didn't do. They they actually uh, begin, the next step was to actually uh, technically suspend all of these entities for for failing to comply. Then then actually ordering them to do an audit, which they also ignored. Ignored. And then uh, there was an order of finding, which is essentially putting them on notice that they're going to be foreclosed on. And then there was an order, order of termination, which actually shut down the whole lot for cause. And the cause was failure to rebut treason against us, against the one people. 
And it was a very, in the end, uh, uh, overall, it's a relatively simple concept. They were basically accused of something they didn't rebut, which in their own system's terms is acquiescence. It's actually an admission. And uh, beyond that point, the remedy that was demanded was this, that the, the uh, assets of the planet were surrendered for the use of, of the people and that the, uh, the, the system was terminated. So when the, when the final filings were made, two things happened. Actually, three. The assets were secured for humanity. The entire corporate system, technically, on paper, in the UCC, was terminated, cancelled, shut down, foreclosed, all debt wiped. It just isn't there anymore, folks, technically. And they also created and brought into life the first of the entities they call CVACs, which are the assistance entities, which are here to facilitate our use of our birthright, which is the assets of the planet. And that's, that's ultimately what we have, is that right of use of the planet. So that's the underlying process that's taken place. And there's lots and lots of detail in there and lots of things to talk about. Uh, but, and we will move on to the, to, the, to the concept of the CVAX in a moment. But I just want to make sure that, that Bob wanted to complete his thought. But I did want to jump in and just finish that part of the picture for people, Bob, just so they could understand the steps that had, had taken place. I'm yeah, throwing I'm, it back to you, Bob. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, I, and, and you're, you're absolutely right, because in order for you to really comprehend, uh, you know, the level and, and what has actually gone on, because these public filings, they are public, they're exactly that. So anyone can use them, anyone can reference them, and to date, no one has been able to rebut them. So they've been, they've, they're not only just filed there, you know, as, as a, uh, a mechanism for shutting down and closing on their charters, but they're also filed for public use. So anyone can reference these documents as international law. They have been convicted. They are guilty of treason, unrebutted. Standing in public record documents, numbers, and they give a whole list of the different numbers which you can download. So, what people need to what people need to do is number one, understand that this has been done for you, and if you all you need to do in order to make advantage of take advantage of it is to identify yourself as a living being of the Creator, one of the people. By making that claim, you have identified yourself as not part of because there's only there's only two parties involved here. You're either part you're either part of the debtor, or you're you're one of the living beneficiaries, and everyone is given that option, even the powers that were. Are you going to be part of the quote unquote what's listed in the debtors and therefore guilty of all the charges therein? Or are you going to be one of the people? And this is a choice that everyone, because you, you can't get around free will choice. If you choose to continue to slave for the system, I'm sure they will more than accommodate you. Or you can make another choice and say, wait a second. First, before I, before I accept anyone's authority, you prove that this isn't true. Prove that you have the authority to do anything that you're saying according to these filings. And this this is this is people people need to start to to become like that that twenty one year old and stand up on top of the wall, you know, and and understand and recognize that you are free if you choose to be. That's it. I mean that the hardest thing we had to get our heads around when we were looking at these we realized about you know a week 10 days in that the effect of these documents is to literally wipe the slate clean try getting your head around that <laughs> okay all the companies are still operating they're all still sitting there they're doing their thing at some point in the hierarchy of those companies 
there are, you know, right at the top most likely, there are people who know that this is going on. And they know that ultimately they can't stop what is to follow, which is we the people ultimately taking action, action on our own behalf based on the work that the trustees have done and literally you know, reclaiming our, our freedom. And so one, well, one, one, one of the things I'd like to touch on, just so not to jump on your sandals, we are going to discuss actual processes that we think would work using these filings, folks. So I know that's where Santos wants to head to, and we are getting to that. It's just going to take just a touch more, touch more discussion. So. And one thing I, I think it's important to note in all of this so that people understand some of the work that went involved, that was involved in, in making all of this happen. You know, it's not that these people don't know, that the, like the powers that be don't know. They've literally, in some cases, gone to their houses. You, you understand? They've, they've been to the houses of the Rothschilds, literally knocked on their doors and, and, and informed them, this is what's going on, this is what's happening. So it's not that, these, that they don't know. They have, been, they have been told, they have been informed directly in some cases you know, about all of the things that are going on and what has taken place. So this is this is not one of those, you know, um, things that somebody has just filed and, you know, willy-nilly and, you know, everybody can just ignore. This is not one of those cases. There's been a lot in, and a lot of people and a lot of uh, time and effort that's gone in, involved in, in making all of these filings happen. And another thing, like Heather said, everybody's suffering under this system. It's only a, 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 a fraction of a percentage of the population that actually benefits from this system. The your, your average soldier, your average military, your average law enforcement police officer are suffering just as much as we are. And they also need to be aware you know, and I believe, like you said, on, at the highest levels, they are aware. But I'm talking about, you know, at your local, you know, clerk and, and, and police officer. They also need to be made aware that this is what has happened. And that really, that, that, that is up to us. That's up to the people. Absolutely. And one, I just want to make one point which relates back to what we think the trust isn't, but it also relates directly to what Lisa and Bob just said in, in the way that we need to actually to view what's taken place. Someone made a comment on one of the blogs we've been monitoring over this issue and, and other stuff where they said, well, you, you know, what are you people doing? You're just overthrowing the government. You know, How dare you? you know, do you know what you're really trying to do? Have you got the right to do that? And to that I would have to say, you, if you understand what the governments actually are, that they are corporations that have been, that have overwritten sovereign nation uh, constitutions by stealth and by commercial thuggery for the last 100, 150 years, particularly in the 1930s when they deliberately crashed the stock market, crashed the economies of many, many Western countries and forced them all to sign up under a very sleazy deal with the IMF, which ensured they would never pay those debts off and forced them to... What it does is actually forces countries to route their tax money out of the country before it really gets even back into the national treasury. And and it's it's just mafioso at high level. It's It's just the financial industry going around, throwing chairs through windows and then demanding insurance from you. What they do is they actually get a hold of the tax money from these countries before the national treasuries get it. We never know how much our GDP is. We only know what gets handed back to us by them. They've been skimming off the top of our national treasuries for generations. And you've really got to get that, folks. This is not us overthrowing anything. This is simply us recovering stolen property. It's nothing more than a commercial. This is a commercial exercise, if you want to look at it that way. So I reject the idea that we're overthrowing any form of government. We're dealing with corporations, and those corporations are predatory, and it would appear they've been terminated. And if I'm sounding passionate, I am. Beautiful. 
Um, are you there, Lisa? I hear someone in the background. Please continue. How, how does this relate to um, what uh, Heather says about I am? I've discussed this in my presentations. You know, uh, they want a name from you under the current uh, oppressive system, well, the system that was, um, and how does the I am come into this? This is the attitude that we need to have going forward, friends, to know that you are. That's all. Well, what you else are. is there? What else is there? There's nothing what else. What else is there? You are. <laughs> That's it. And a name and a name reduces you to one of their items, one of their commercial items. But you are cannot ever be encased in any object or, or item and which is what you are not. <laughs> we are we are. And so um talk a little bit about that please. Oh, that's a big subject. <laughs> yeah, because, hey, because you, you, were like saying, <laughs> you were saying oh, before, sorry. Lisa, that um, you know, uh, we need to act as the free people that we are. We just need to continue now, and uh, this is the way forward, to know that you are free, be free, and act, or, or just not even act, just be free in all your dealings. Be free. And it's have such no an internal fear. process. It's an internal process first and foremost. And one of the, the comment I was going to make earlier when I got cut off was, as Bob was talking also about the, the Berlin Wall. You know, apparently when the American slaves were freed, it took up to a year for some of them to find out. So they were still living and being and thinking and acting as slaves long after they had been legally set free. And we're in a different time and communication happens so rapidly these days it's not going to take a year but it's it's still a slow process you know these these documents and this information's been out now for about four weeks and it's still a very small percentage of the population who is trying to get their head around them um which is why i say we need a you know a, a bit of a groundswell movement to to start sharing this information with each other and and sharing it with your family and your friends and your social networks and whoever you're connected to um, but first and foremost it's an internal process and there are still we've talked about this on our show several times you know the idea of self-governance of the relationship that you have between yourself and the creator being the only relationship that governs how you act how you be how you do it's scary for some people. It really is. They, they like the boundaries. They like, and we've been brought up with those for generations now, where we don't have to think for ourselves because there is a rule, there is a law, there is a something to tell us what to do in any given situation. So you you not you don't have to be responsible. You just you don't even have to think about it. Um, Good point. And, and we're being asked now to start to think to start to be completely and utterly self-responsible for our every thought, word and deed. And not because there's a consequence uh, in terms of a fine to pay or, you know, prison time or, you know, any of that rubbish. Not because those are the consequences, but because of the, the spiritual consequence to who, to who I am. And that, that's where we all need to step into. So if those laws are gone, if those if those consequences are now not governing my actions, then what is? And it's it comes down to you and who you are and your relationship to your creator. Right. Beautiful. Beingness, beingness is is one of those things. It's it's quantifying your infinite nature. To be a being means that you are always existing. You exist in some form, always, all times, some place. You exist. As soon as you put a name to yourself, you have defined. <laughs> you have you have now become um, relegated from an infinite being to a finite being. That you fit into a um, a category or a name, which you really can't. You know, you you really can't be. You, there's there's no. You are an aspect of the creator. 
Therefore, you are infinite. You are a being. Now, you can identify yourself in certain aspects, you know, and, and as far as identification is concerned. You know, I go by the name of blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, is that who you are? No. That is how I'm called. But who am I? I, I, I just am. I do have another message uh, from Heather, which she's asked for me to share. For those wondering about OPPT's response to the actions or inactions of those, the people that we can visibly see, like Obama, etc., it is the wizard and the big dogs behind the curtain that I am coming for, and they know it. In absolute love and peace, with absolute gratitude and grace, Heather. Got to love that. <laughs> because we've got to remember that, that what we see played out in public is theatre you know the inauguration is in fact a theatre because the, the, the original constitution of the United States doesn't exist on paper and the corporate constitution doesn't exist on paper so what is that man standing there doing in front of half a million people well, she just clarified Obama is not the wizard or the big dog, by the way. No, he's he's just the guy out front um, entertaining us at the moment. I'm serious about that. He's he's literally a placeholder to keep our attention. Which is, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If he's on our side, fine. <laughs> Someone's got to do it. Because we've got a One of the things people listening to this need to realise is that there are billions of people out there who are not party to this conversation, who don't even know about this yet. And one of our jobs in the next months and years is to actually fix that, is to actually, you know, we, we think there'll be some kind of initial disclosure which could be fairly dramatic, but beyond that point, it's going to be up to us to help those around us understand what's going on and the choice that's been put in front of us because it, it, it is utterly the most important choice that we probably have ever made as a group of beings on this planet ever. So... So we need to get this out as fast and as broad as possible out there in, in all of our um, social uh, or media networks that we have, yeah? Let's yep. Yep. Yeah, we do. And uh, we've got to do it carefully because it's complicated. You know, this is complicated stuff and the game isn't over yet. It's still in play uh, and, you know, we're seeing it unfold in bits and pieces in, in front of us. And uh, we're trying not to get too excited and trying not to set expectations for ourselves, but, you know, it's, we're humans and that'll happen, but we have to let this play out. Well, it's actually getting less and less complicated as time goes on because those initial documents, as, you, as was stated earlier, were not designed for us. They were designed for the system and they were written in the system's language. The more recent documents even state the language of legalese is no more. And... They're in a more, they're still very 5D, you know, but they're not just swamped in legalese. So they're becoming easier to read, easier to comprehend, and people are putting them, are even converting them again into a, an easier to understand language. And people, just put, there are little groups all around the world who are working with these documents um, in various ways, whether it's to see what they can do in terms of using them to enforce their own personal situations or just converting them into an easier language in order to be able to share them. Uh, it's, it's happening all over the place. Indeed. And look, one, one, there's one issue we've got to address too, guys, which we actually haven't touched on, and it's the thing that attracts people's attention in the first instance, like a, like a bullet, but it's actually it's not the issue that they think it is. And that's this concept that, that everyone's going to get $10 billion to play with. That, that was never the intention of anyone involved in this process because to, to hand out money like that would simply bring the whole system to a halt and would wreck the place. It's the, the equivalent of, of taking a baseball bat to your own china shop if you did that. And it's not going to work out that way. And we don't know exactly how the financial system will be handled but you've got to bear in mind that the actions of the trustees actually erase and eradicate all 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 the fictional debt as well as the as well as the corporations that generated it so don't be getting the idea that we will be 
suddenly getting this massive check in the mail or a gold delivery, that's not going to happen. And I think it'll, you know, if you if you think about it for more than 30 seconds, you realise it has to be a carefully managed process. And if you look at the documents, you realise these people are not idiots and they've been working on this for a long time and I suspect that they will roll out something that when we see it, we'll say, oh yeah, that's quite sensible. So you need to... to um, you know, a not be not be fearful of of you know whatever debt you might think you're in because you're actually apparently not in any debt, uh, and b just understand that you know we we haven't had all of this rolled out to us yet and there's still a lot of information to come. Any comments on that, Lisa or Bob? Yes, you know that the, the whole idea, you know, um, and they did in the documents. You will find that they have called for restitution, there was an equity call, um, and secured, what, $5 billion in gold and silver for every man, woman, and child, and then $5 billion uh, additional in gold and silver for reconciliation for as far as damages are concerned. And that, and to, just to, just to jump in, that's the value they stole from us, folks. That's what I was talking about before. So continue, Bob. Yeah. Now, now that 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 value, and and Heather will also repeat, and you, if you listen to her interview, she'll say it again and again. That value is not; it is merely a scratch of the surface, because really, what value does anyone have? Who who knows? Your value is infinite. You know, who knows who's going to who's going to invent the the next mechanism for interstellar travel. It could be anyone. Somebody could invent that by accident in their in their in their garage. It happens all the time. Who knows who has what value? So everyone must be given infinite value, infinite potential, because that's where we all are. We all are infinite beings. So don't let don't don't let this the 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 numbers and the and the money be a distraction, because that's just a scratch of the surface of what your true value is. And do we get to? Are, are we going to uh, move back into another a situation where you know money is used as a mechanism for control? No, that's not what we want to happen. We, I, I believe that in line of this uh, this whole documentation and and the wording, it, it what it does is it literally makes money irrelevant, and that's where we want to be. Where money becomes ir- irrelevant, you do and you and you you do based on what you're being, and you should be allowed to be anything that you choose. So if you decide that you wish to be a teacher, okay, you are guaranteed that right, that choice, the freedom to be a teacher. So what does that mean for you? Well, that means I'm going to need to have a good computer. I'm going to have access to a library. I'm going to need transportation. I'm going to need all of these things. Well, those are all of the things that you're doing as far as what you chose to be, and that is your right. It's not something that, you know, uh, you, you necessarily have to pay for. And this is a whole different concept of of the way that we think about, you know, because we've we've all lived in a system where money has been used to control us. Most of our most of the choices that people make today are based on money. How many people are actually in jobs that they just love to death, can't wait to get to work? How many are how many of you are in those types of jobs, or are you in the job that you're in because it pays a certain amount, and you have to pay the bills. Is that what you would really choose to be doing? Is that w- what you would choose to be being? Probably not. But your your our whole concept has been based on making ends meet and and gaining you know as much quote unquote money as we can, and that has been the dictator of all the choices that we make in in our in our occupations, how we spend our time, or how we don't spend our time. You know, how many would like to spend more time with their families, you know, or just to go on vacation and see the world. You don't have those choices to make. 
And this is this is the state that we find ourselves in. So when we talk about what does it mean to be free, it means to be free, to be rid of all of those quote-unquote obligations. Because if all that you have in your life are obligations from moment to moment to moment, have to go to work, have to, you know, have to pay my taxes, have to do this, I have to do that, you, this is the definition of slavery. You have no choice. All you have are obligations. So what we're saying is all those obligations are now removed. So now what do you choose to be? Mm. That is a really, really uh, confronting thing because billions of us on this planet have just never been in that position before. And this is this is why it's taken us a couple of weeks to get our heads around the implications of what's happened. And as time goes on we're 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 seeing it just become more and more uh, you know, um momentous, the potential for change here. And all over the world people are are starting to get it. If you want evidence of that, if you go to removing the shackles dot blogspot dot be Actually, I've, removing the shackles. Blogspot. Be actually is correct. Go back a few days. There's some writings from two people. One's in Croatia talking about, well, yeah, we've got to decide what we want to be. What can we do with this this freedom that we've been given? And there's another one from Iceland, restating the same thing from from uh, yet another perspective. So, if you're sitting there thinking that you're alone in trying to grapple with this, you're not. Some of the questions coming in um, now. One question, when can we see these documents? Um, who is bringing all available. Forward? Yeah, they all are. Available that's what to I was the public. Thinking. We've already addressed that. The, the website that's up, peoplestrust1776.org, uh, um, is that org? Yes. Yes, it is? Okay. Um, those documents were not meant for the public, is what Chris said earlier. But you can go in and and read them. Uh, they weren't meant. They weren't written in, a, in an easy uh, manner for um, everyone, just to uh, for the public, just to uh, um, uh, look at and um, and consume in that way. Is that what you were saying, right, Chris? But I think these yep. people might be talking about uh, documents for remedies. Perhaps is that okay. what they're, they're talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are because that's people who've got problems now will want remedy now. Okay, now uh, Heather released an initial batch of indicative material uh, is the best way to describe it, which you can get from uh, American Kabuki or Kawila Pele's website. You'll, you'll have to hunt around a little bit for it, but it's about six or eight documents. We've been through some of them in detail, and we can see the direction they're headed. Now, you you potentially can use some of them as are, and others of them will have to be adapted. But I think what the trustees were doing was giving us an indication of of the style of usage that they're recommending. And and Heather has clearly said that that it's up to us to actually use this and create our own remedies. And, and we've got an example of that that, that, that that we're working on at the moment, which I'll describe in a minute, but I'll just sort of round this out by saying that all over the planet there will be people who are looking at what the guys have done and and will start using this. We're right on the cutting edge of this, folks. We, uh, you know, we haven't got a suite of documents we can roll out right now and here, you know, here it is, fill in your name here, you know, wave this at the judge there and all will be well. We don't have that. We're not there yet. We're on the way there. But we're not not right there now. Just, well, um, just, yeah. Just, well, I just want to explain. Make... I just want to explain that the the uh, the thumbnail of the process that we appear that appears to be involved is simply this: that that as part of a filing, and I'll talk about a generic filing you want to make to a government department or to uh, a bank or whoever, is simply to say you've made a claim on me. I, I am. Let me start with I am. I am a, I'm a living human being. You've made a claim on me. Yet I see that in UCC law, there was a filing which was recently unrebutted that claimed that you have have mistreated myself and everybody else and were foreclosed upon and actually have no, no standing at all anymore. Um, if you care to rebut that, then... Um, 
uh, we can have a discussion. If you don't rebut that, then we have nothing to discuss. And, and in principle, that's what's going on with all of the documents that Heather's released. There is, uh, uh, as Lisa said before, you're making a claim over me. Uh, before you can make any claim over me, you better rebut this UCC filing. And that, that should stop them dead in their tracks ultimately. But, but exactly how we're doing that is a process that we are going to have to work on because you know, freedom still ain't free. We, we're not going to get anything on a platter and this is one of the bits we're going to have to work out ourselves. And uh, there's plenty of people out there in the straw man movement who've used similar kinds of processes but without the big thumping hammer that these UCC filings are or should be if they're properly used. If you reference these and say, yes, that's, that's, that's a nice letter you've sent to me with a very big number on it that you'd like to get from me, but first, before we have any further discussions, you better rebut this because according to this, you don't exist. And, and, and it's, not, it's not only that they don't exist, but also rebut this, that there has been reported lots of people engaging in private money systems and slavery systems. Please prove to me that you're not one of those. Yep. This is the number of ways you could go with this, folks. Please, please prove to me that you're not committing treason by making this claim. Uh, guys, we've got a caller. Would you like to take some calls? Um, okay, let's go be. to... Okay, well, it's... Um, Code 562. So, caller with uh, code 562, are you there? Hello? Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay. Um, I have been following this uh, since December 25th, and I have... Um, my question is, I'm hearing what you say, and I'm really grateful for this process, but I would like to know, are they going to give classes on how people can create remedies? And to spit it out bluntly, I just want to say to you that the police, if any of the things that you suggested you said to the police, most of them would take you physically, hurt you, and force you wherever they wanted you to go. Yep. Can I speak to that, um, Santos? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, uh, Sorry, uh, do you mind giving us your name? Uh, Chris. Oh, okay. I think I can remember that because I'm Chris too. Chris, you're absolutely right because at that level they won't have any idea what's going on and that's a very, very common problem with anyone attempting legal remedy with the system as it stands because behind every piece of paper is a gun. Now, one of the reasons we're not, we're not rushing into this is the one you're speaking of and... The advice that I've heard from many people in the straw man slash sovereignty, sovereignty type movement is to not to attempt to use these kinds of legal moves on, on operatives in the streets, on their agents in the streets, because they're not trained in it, they don't understand it. And the thing we have to remember is that they're one of us. They're actually in the same position that we are in relation to the people's trust. They just don't know it yet. So it, I have to tell this... Straight up now, and I'm sure Bob would agree and Sandos would agree, do not try this in the street with, uh, with uh, policemen. Uh, the, 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 lowest, the, the lowest down the system you should really might go might be a clerk of courts or a judge if you actually want to actually bring it to the attention of a judge as part of a, a situation that you're in. But I really wouldn't go any lower because they won't get it. And they're trained... When they, when they run across something they don't understand, to stick a gun in its face and handcuffs on it and haul it off to somewhere where they can hand it over to someone else who will make more sense of it. That's and a so great example. My question is, really, when will this get to the point where we have enough information or help um, to really be able to move with this? All I, all I can say to that is this is a process. It's I would say in... Within a month or two, there should be enough people around the planet working on this to get it to the stage where it can be used one of two ways. One will be noticing the system, telling the system, as Lisa suggested, going to the system and saying, this is a situation, and if you can't rebut this, 
then here are my terms and conditions for having a conversation with you in the future. And any time, and I'll speak about this in a little bit more detail in a moment, any time you want to interact with me, here are my prices. Okay, and, and we know they won't be able to rebut it. They won't like it either. But it really needs to be done at the right level of the system and in advance. And, and one, of the, one of the concepts I'd like to move into people's heads is this is part of the action that we need to take to notice the system that we know what's going on and that we're going to stand our ground. It's very dangerous to do that at street level. Your son was in a very dangerous position and, and the last thing you want to do is provoke those guys when they're, you know, when they're all that, in that situation. And one of the really important concepts that we've run across from another process that we're, we're involved with called the Divine Province is that if we want to take this path, we have to go to peace with them. Okay, we're not going to be at war with them per se. This is not where we're going. We are going to peace and we are going to literally walk away from the old stuff. We have to keep that in mind any time we interact with them. And we want to act proactively as much as possible when we've got the processes sorted out so that it can be done in a very civilised manner and, and kept at peace. And one of the things to always bear in mind is that people that you're dealing with are just another one of you. It's, it's the classic in like Hesh, they're another one of us. They're just in a different place and, and their knowledge and attitude is different and it's part of our responsibility to try and move them to the right place when we're dealing with them. And, then, you know, and I know this, I'm, a, I'm kind of talking theory and you want to know what to do on the street. But no, I don't moment. want to know. Actually, this isn't on, I guess when you mean on the street, you mean with individual police people? He was completely yes, compliant. He yeah. didn't cause any problems. That's probably, you know, why they let him go. That's but, I mean, they were certainly trying to push him to the point where he was non-compliant. But, he's, you know, he stayed compliant. He's a smart person. Yep. No, yeah. That's the best thing you can do. But, um, but it did bring me to a different level with all of this, you know, because I hear stories from a lot of my students. Also, and about this kind of thing, and so I'm just I'm just trying to get really down to the real nitty gritty of, you know, when people want to move forward with this, which of course anybody would want to. Um, do you think that they're going to come out with some um, more information to help us get comfortable with it on how this is going to really look day to day for yeah. us? I actually do. I mean, Heather keeps saying repeatedly that it's it's coming. It's more is on the way. All will be revealed. Um, I think there's more. There's so much more. Yeah. Look, one of the, one of the things that's required to really give this process traction is some form of widespread public disclosure. Now, for instance, we we as a group yesterday were doing what Cliff I would call wild ass speculation. <laughs> he calls it WAS, wild ass speculation, that maybe Obama would make some sort of announcement at this uh, inauguration event. Now, it was silly of us to even think about that because if you turn half a million people into um, uh, half a million people who are scared or angry or whatever, you've got a real problem. It's just, just, a, just a mess. So you actually, it was even silly of us to even go there. But ultimately, there, there, there needs to be some sort of disclosure take place because all these guys in government are sitting there and they know what's going on. It's absolutely inevitable. In fact, it's actually required of them. And uh, once that process has taken place, then our individual actions will still be required but will be that much easier. And we know that the, the trustees haven't yet released anywhere near the amount of sample material that they, I'm sure they would like to, re to release to it. But I just keep, keep telling people we're right on the cutting edge of this and the, there's a couple of critical parts of the game still in play. So, unfortunately, uh, patience is required still. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. I mean, this, and I'm actually glad this happened with my son because it, you know, I kind of live in la-la land as far as, you know, everybody's nice and everyone gets along. But I really realize that things can really be, um, there's a lot of abuse out there with our police and our the people that are supposed to be um, in charge. Yes, and that's why, and that's why it's good when the system uh, comes down on you sometimes because it wakes it wakes you up. People are awakened by this, so they're doing us a favour, and that's beautiful. And the reason why they're doing this, and why would they have done this? Um, 
to your to your husband caller because we're in we are in debt mode. Everybody's going around collecting debts. So since the trust, we have been out of debt, and we will see that these incidents will um, become less and less and fewer and fewer. Thanks, caller. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, okay. Look, the, the other entity that they created with the filings is is the the, the assistance entities I've referred to. The acronym is CVAC, it's Creators Value Asset Centres. And the key thing to understand here is these are not government. These are very simple entities with the, the highest of ethical standards required of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, complete transparency, complete accountability, complete personal responsibility. And, and don't, be, don't be intimidated by that complete responsible, uh, personal responsibility, folks, because you as a human are underwritten by all the value we spoke of. That $10 billion is the value that underwrites you when you're acting within our community. Now, what the CVAC does is it provides a, a hub on which you can build projects, on which you could build further methods of administration by process. They, any hub that, you, that, that is created underneath the main CVAC, and there are 195 allowed for in the constitution of the CVACs for roughly 195 nations. Okay. The first one has been activated with Treasure as the placeholder, sorry, with, with Heather as the, she's the Treasure, Freudian slip, with Heather, with <laughs> Heather as a, I can that yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, with Heather as a placeholder, I, I need to finish this just so people understand, Heather as a placeholder and what you need to get in your minds is this, that though there's 195 CVACs, they're all the same. You belong to every one of them. Every one of them is required to assist you in in you know, experiencing whatever it is you want to experience on Earth, and 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 using your value to you know add to that experience. That's what they're there for. They activated the one in the U.S. and instantly everybody is a member everywhere. And if they activated one in Guatemala, we're also a member of that. Okay, so this is a a three D network that we're creating where, that's, where everyone is linked to every aspect of it. And in relation to what happened with President Obama and his oath yesterday, where we suspect that President Obama is actually being bound by his oath to be president of the CVAC in place of Heather, which is what we're speculating about. Don't take me at that as fact. Let me just read you one of the specifications for a CVAC. Immediately it's established, and it's this. And I can give you the document number in a moment to duly produce immediate, true, accurate and complete full disclosure to said states of body, of ab states of body which is us, of absolute truth, knowledge and the absolute standing, authority, value, rights, principles of law of said states of body inclusive of disclosure of ULI document blah 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 which is a document, the document that forecloses on the system starting with the Bank of Inter International Settlements all verified ordinances therein, duly verified underwriting of creations, value assets, centre VA, CVAC. If, if Obama is bound by an oath to the CVAC, it would appear to us, looking at this document, he's required to disclose everything. And Heather describes disclosure as a disclosure of, of absolute data, and in her definition, that is the truth about everything, leaving out nothing. So that is... If, if that is taking place behind the scenes now with the inauguration that just, just happened in the last 12 hours, then our new public servant, Mr. Obama, is required to disclose everything. That's, that's what I think, that's what I personally think is going on in the background. I hope that's I'm right. That's wild speculation. That's my wild <laughs> speculation. I'll shut up now and I just wanted um, to get that, see that concept out there and we'll let Dee come back with any new information she has. Can I? Yeah, let's uh, let's bring Dee in, please. Are you there, Dee? I am here, hiding in the background. Beautiful. Thank you. So um, we're um, looking well, to get. Well, I'd be interested get... to see what her thoughts are on watching the inauguration. How she felt about it. What she what she noticed. One of the things that has been mentioned is there was a conspicuous absence of the bushes. Ah, uh, uh, yes, there certainly was, wasn't there? Hmm. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? I... Um, mm. Because we know the Bushes have been around for 40 years solidly since JFK, and uh, 
we would expect that he would ha they would have a lot to do with Barack Obama, wouldn't they? <laughs> have in the past. Yes. Yeah. Um, I am going to stand mute on that point for the moment. Um, they were conspicuously absent. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, they, I think they are. You know, this is this is my wild ass speculation that in those documents, the they sort of everybody's bundled. You know, everyone's bundled under the one label of the creditors or the debtors. They're now, they're now the debtors, um, and I think the Bushes are very high up on that list. And you know, Daddy Bush, it's been said, has been sick. Um out of action uh there's lots yep. of reasons for that lots of speculation about why that why that is but no excuse but no public excuse for why baby bush wouldn't be there um there's no there's, there hasn't been it nope. was just it was just ignored there it was there yes exactly ignored. that it was completely ignored if you noticed there was not even a comment from any newscaster even questioning why they weren't there. It was completely ignored. Hmm. I found that even more interesting than the fact that they weren't there. Yeah, exactly. There were some very interesting things, very interesting things that happened. Um, and I went back I, and looked at the 2008 inauguration to see if there was any difference in the, in the wording. And actually, the only difference between what Obama said back then and what he said this morning was the word faithfully. He didn't say the word faithfully. And that was it. That was the only difference. Well, and, and, and uh, in 2008, he also didn't say United States. <laughs> oh, that's right. He fumbled on it. Yes. <laughs> I found that very telling. And I'll have to say, I, w I was talking to a friend of mine this evening and I said I found that very telling because the president of a country doesn't fumble over the name of his own country. There was something more behind that. That's just me saying what my gut reaction was instantaneously was like, oh, what was that? Yeah, that's that's too significant. Yep, mm. exactly. It was no fumbling this time. Yeah, Dave, just one thing that I, I did pick up when the president and the entourage were walking down a set of stairs to the podium on camera, one of the commentators said, oh, they look like they're going to a funeral. There was did, you catch, did you catch that comment? They were looking very, very serious. Very serious and somber and yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, I actually found that the emotions on the faces of everyone didn't fit. And at different points, they didn't fit. Like, you'd look over, and at one point, they caught Bill Clinton, and he had this glare on his face. And then about five minutes later, again, the camera just panned slightly that you could see him, and he had this silly grin on his face. And at the same time, at, during a point of, of, of the inaugural speech... Um, which was kind of a more upbeat, you know, uh, uh, section of it, you know, talking about hope and all the rest of it. And Michelle Obama's face was incredibly somber, like incredibly um, mm. in a p opposition to the topic that was being discussed. And if you looked, if you actually go back and watch the whole thing, I think you'll find that there was a lot of mismatched emotions and facial expressions through the whole thing. It always is, isn't it, in these commercial things? It always is because they're, um, you know, they know that they've sold out. They've, 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 they've got allegiances everywhere. There's so much pressure, you know. There's pressure from corporations that give them money. They've got to look good to them. They've got to look good to the people. They're stuck in the middle, you know, um, these servants. And But, I mean, they put themselves in that situation, don't they? Because they're greedy for power. Uh, but then when they get there, <laughs> you know, it's a different uh, story. They've got to please everybody because they find that there's stratas and stratas of control above them. So they look funny. They get to you the can top of the tree and realise they're, they're... the top of the tree. 
they're, well, they're living in a phony world, so their faces are phony. The, the way they talk, it's just, it's all fraudulent and phony. It's not from the heart. There's a big disconnect from nature. They're unnatural. They're, it's like intelligent animals going through ceremonies and all the other unintelligent animals clapping on and, and cheering them on and saying, well, these are the most intelligent of the animals amongst us and uh, <laughs> hallelujah, you know. And it's just all um, this moronic miasma of stupidity it's all fake it's all phony it's unnatural the sooner this behavior stops on this planet the better we'll be free from this infestation of the vatican controlled mind controlled planet what a what a sad sad thing it was and thank goodness that we've got the people's trust folks um this is this is beautiful i've uh, since i've discovered it uh, i've been sleeping much better at night we all lose sleep due to debt debt yes. is causing every single vile aberration on this planet everyone thinks someone else owes them money or something you know uh so once yeah, that's... But it goes beyond that too but it's not just the financial that's the thing i mean we are I've talked to a lot of people. I spent a lot of today on the phone and on Skype taking messages and talking to people. Yes, the the, the immediate is the financial, the debt. I mean, that is the peop everyone's overwhelming um concern now is is need money, need money. You know, got to put gas in the car, got to feed my children, etc. But it's beyond that because the money controls everything. The mon it, it, it's the reverse pyramid, right? Money controls everything above it. So politics, the, 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 the big pharma, the oil companies, the, the religion, it all comes under – it's all controlled through the money. And that's, that's the whole thing is, is when you're dealing with that aspect of these people controlling the money – and controlling the lives of people, they control the entire aspect from every side, from end, every corner. There is this control holding on to them. And that is what's disappeared and what is disappearing. You know, the one thing I just want to talk to people about just briefly, because I know we don't have much time. As I said, I've spent all afternoon on the phone. And I have literally talked three good friends of mine down off the ledge today because they were just like, oh, this is it, it's the end, it's over, I don't know what to do. The changes are tangibly right in front of us. And I know that a lot of people are, are they've been worn down by the constant uh, people saying, oh, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> this is something very different. And it is going to become very, very clear, as I'm sure that you and Lisa have said, Chris, that the documents that the People's Trust have put out, they are difficult to read. Um, you have to be in the right mindset and right heart set as well. Um, you have to know that very, very soon, and I mean very soon, everything is going to be made very clear. There won't be any more guessing work or trying to decipher. It will be extremely clear as to what is happening, what has happened, and how things are going to move forward. Um, the other thing I want to say is this. Going, uh, talking about you know, all the stuff that I've been talking about on removing the shackles, about what's been going on for the last month and a half. Um, everything that has happened behind the curtain uh, has been directly... Um, affected by the people's trust. Everything that's been going on, there are people literally running around in Washington, D.C. with their hair on fire right now. Um, <clears throat> um, people in high offices throwing stuff at walls because they're so frustrated they don't know what to do. And we know for a fact that the the White House is issuing orders to the press to not talk about the people's trust. And to not run with that story. So, you know what? I think you're right. I think it's time to get, uh, one of the callers said, it's time to get the, 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 the public's media going and, and bring it out there. Bypass the mainstream media or, or create a situation where they're forced to report on it because everyone else is around them. Um, 
but yeah, I just I think, think that's the only way to do it. It's well, to it force is force them to. Yeah. Yep. You know, and this is it. Uh, we do have someone who is writing a petition to the White House. Um, uh, I'm going to be looking over that later on this evening if I can get to it. Um, but this is it. It's going going forward. Just literally get out there. Tell the people. Get it on websites. And I hate to say it, like, it's time to stop the bickering and infighting. Like, it's ridiculous. This is the real deal. And this is moving forward. And it's time to get everyone behind it to move it forward in mass. And very, very soon, it is all going to be very, very clear. Actually, in light of that, I'll just share with you what uh, a message Brian left with me, which is that once the systems come undone, the people won't have to worry about trying to fight back. There will be nothing left to fight back against. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's one of the things I just wanted to kind of say was the fact that everyone wants the paperwork. They want to know how to fill it out. It's very confusing. Yes. Um, very, very soon, that's not even going to be an issue. 